Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this horse painting. So it's painted onto unprimed paper and this is the paper that I used. Um, it's purchased on a pad at WH Smith's and I find it doesn't buckle even with quite a bit of paint on it. So it's very good paper. Before we start then, I'm just going to show you quickly how I prepare this paper for painting. I will use a wash of Gamsol and raw sienna and then I cover the painting area just like this. You want the consistency of the paint to be very fluid. So put the paper onto one side to dry and leave it overnight and you'll be ready to use it the next day. You want to make sure that all the Gamsol has evaporated from the paper and it is thoroughly dry before you start painting on it. So let's start painting then. I have painted this picture in three sittings and I've split them up so you can see at what point I start and I stop. So I just wanted to have a quick word about this paper. Now it is unprimed, so you will find that it is absorbent. If you're new to painting, the benefit of using this type of paper is that you can lay the paint quite thickly and because of the absorbency of the paper, you won't lose control of your painting as easily as you can on a primed canvas board. I like using this paper because it allows me to paint fast, which is great if you are doing commissions. It does take a little bit of getting used to though, but with a bit of practice, it is a good surface to work on. So stick with it and give it a try. So I work in layers then for my animal paintings because it's a sort of a hybrid method that I've developed. I mean, I like the security that an underpainting gives you, but I don't like the fact that it overly mutes my colours for this type of painting. I want my painting to have a fresh feel like an Alla Prima painting, but I also want the security of knowing that I've got everything in the right place. So this is why I paint in layers. So for my first layer then, I'm just laying my paint in a very thin wash using Gamsol to thin it down, trying to get closer to what I, I'm looking at at my reference photo. So I'm not trying to make the jump all in one go. At this beginning stage, I'm really just giving it my best guess at what I think the values are, what I think the temperatures are and what I think the colour hues are. I will work on the painting as a whole because if you leave areas unfinished you'll find that it will throw you off course and you won't be able to judge your values and your temperatures as accurately so you need to work on the painting as a whole. Any issues with layer one at this point are left for me really to figure out on layer two. I'm not really getting stressed about the areas that appear to be incorrect at this stage. I'm just leaving them for the next day. On layer two then, I'm laying the paint thicker and I'm not using Gamsol anymore to thin it down. I'm using a little bit of linseed oil to make my more opaque paints run a bit more fluidly. In order to make this horse look integrated into its background, you must make sure that you mix in some of the green into your browns. You'll be able to use this mix in your cooler areas. You also need to mix some of the brown into your green when you lay down your background. This will avoid you having that issue of a, a sort of a horse that looks separated from its background. You want the whole thing to flow very harmonious on the eye. For my brush selection then, I'm using flat brushes mainly, some filberts for the background area and small round brushes for detailed areas like the eye and the nose area. 
don't feel like you have to cover every inch in paint on layer two. So the benefit of working it in layers is that you can allow different parts of the under layer to show through and you can leave some areas really quite unfinished and it will work very well provided you have a strong central point of focus. So here then, my central point of focus is the horse's eye, which is where I've put most of my detailed paint. So when I feel I've gone as far as I can with this layer, I don't want to overwork it. So it's always best to stop a little bit sooner rather than to tip over into that overworking. So then I'll leave it and I'll go and tighten up with my detail in layer three. So again, I'm being very selective with the areas that I choose to sharpen up on. I mean, here it's mainly around the eye. That's the area that I have chosen to have as my tightest area. And here it is then, the finished painting. I hope you've enjoyed my video today. Please subscribe to my channel if you can and check out my website sarahhalladayart.com where you'll find my work in details of one-to-one -one classes and online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next week's one.